This is episode 6 and we're going to talk about configuration. Uh, first off, console. Just to the left of the number 1 key is the tilde and if you hit that it will bring up the console. If you hit tab it brings you a list of all commands in the game which might not be the most useful thing on its own but if you start out typing a command like say B, well bind is the only option so it shows that, C uh, COM, hit tab, it fills in the underscore because that's the only possibility and it also shows that these are the two options. So, com max FPS. This is a good thing to talk about. Um, com max FPS is... Uh, there's a meme that the human eye can only see blah 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 frames per second. I think almost everybody knows that's false by now, but there is an important interaction in the way your PC draws the frames to send to your monitor and your monitor displays those frames. Simply put, the higher the frame rate, the better. The higher the refresh rate, the better. It all adds up to a more responsive game and lets you see mouse movements apply on the screen faster. So, if you have lower frame rate and you're moving your mouse, you're not going to feel the change in direction as quickly. If you have lower refresh rate, you're not going to feel it as quickly. And input lag to the monitor is also a major factor, but a lot of people aren't aware that the refresh rate on the monitor actually does improve the responsiveness. So, higher numbers on those are always better. I go for 500 frames per second cap and reflex. Uh, 250 honestly feels just about the same, but, you know, it, my computer is usually capable of handling it. I have a 770, GTX 770. So, uh, aside from that, there are a couple other commands uh, in the options menu. Max frame rate's also here, so you don't need to type that in. But I just showed that as an example because that was something I thought of there. There are some commands in the console that do not exist in the options menu, like the weapon offset commands. So these let you move your weapon around. Um, you can, let's see, yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. So you can move the weapon so that it's in different positions. Uh, I actually have mine in a slightly different position. Just if anybody's curious, uh, X, Y, Z, 5, negative 20, 20. And I don't remember what the defaults were, but just, you know, you can move this around so it doesn't take up as much screen space. Another command that's, I don't think, in the, uh, co in the options is CL player outline enemy and friendly. These you just set to numbers. So it goes 1 to 6. And I prefer to use this green for friendlies. I think the default's red, or for green for enemies. I think the default is red because um, I am a red green colorblind. I have difficulty seeing red. It just does not stand out for my eyes. So I put friendlies as red because that's fine. I don't need to recognize out of the corner of my eye that friendlies there. I just don't want to mix it up with the enemy. So there's enemy and friendly. Never set these to the same number, especially if you go into a team game, because then you will not be able to tell the difference between enemies and friends. And as you can see, the skin color of the player, you can go to options, player, and these colors affect what your character looks like. This will always be displayed exactly as you intend it here. So you can be on either team, you're going to look like this. It's just the outline that defines whether you're friendly or enemy. Another command that is not in the uh, options menu, show gun. You can hide the gun. Personal choice. You can also just use the weapon offset things to move it way down, and that's fine too. Um, I talked about RLM build that builds the light map. I don't want to do that now because this one takes a while, and you know it sees their sky there, so it de decides that this is what the shadow should be here based on the sky and these lights here, all that stuff. It takes a while, but if you do not have light maps built on the map, it looks kind of ugly and it can be hard to see. So, there's that. Um, next up in the options menu is, uh, I should mention this again, um, weapons under input. Move rockets, iron cannon, bolt rifle somewhere that you can hit while you're in the middle of fighting. Very important. Uh, next up is field of view. Most people know what this is, but just to show you, field of view is zooming in. Whenever you go lower, 
and zooming out so that you can see things further around you. And there's a bit of a stereotype of uh, fast-paced games like this of people using like 130 frame, uh, FOV. And some people do, but at the high end, I honestly think you're going to see a lot more people using like 100, maybe even 90, maybe in some cases even lower. And the reason for that is the higher FOV is nice for awareness by sight, but whenever you get into a high-level duel, you're already going to know where your opponent is based on the sounds that you're hearing. So you don't need a higher field of view. On the other hand, if you go like this, and you're trying to track your opponent with a lightning gun, well, ion cannon, excuse me, it's a lot easier if you have low field of view. So, more often, you'll see people with 90, and personally I'm using 100 in Reflex. I just think it feels about right. I think I was using 90 in Quake Live last time I was playing. Um, next up in the Options menu, Texture Micro Details. I swear, if you go over here, this is supposed to be high visibility mode, but uh, for whatever reason, um, flat textures. If you disable um, texture micro details, then all the texture details just become something flat. And a lot of people like this. I have, um, you know, if somebody uses it, that's fine. I personally prefer to have the texture micro details enabled because I have a trouble, uh, a bit of trouble trying to gauge depth perception if I do not have these details on. So it just helps me to have it on. I don't think there's a major difference in frame rate whenever you turn it on or off. Um, then all the other stuff here, I have these all set on low. The game still looks reasonably okay. I mean, I know it is 2015 and there are much more beautiful games out there than stuff like this, but you could turn it up and make it look prettier, but frame rate is really important in terms of how the game feels to me, so I definitely leave that on low because it does make an impact on frame rate. Um, let's see, next up we can talk about mouse. There is a website out there, mouse-sensitivity.com. I'll provide it in the details of this video. And that website is uh, very handy if you're coming from another game because it has reflex in the list of games you can select and you can very easily change your mouse, uh, take a mouse speed from like Counter-Strike or Quake Live and then figure out sensitivity in Quake Live is 1.15 is what I use there. So. I use that site and it tells me this is what my M speed should be to get the exact same feeling in Reflex. So, if you're coming from another game, mousesensitivity.com. Anyway, um, very commonly in first-person shooter games, if you're not familiar with this, people use relatively low mouse sensitivities. The lower mouse sensitivity is enabled you to track people at a distance like this. You want to be able to you know, make small adjustments. You don't want to have to, like, you, you know, if you have M speed, like 15, uh, I can't make those small adjustments, so I'd have to make an adjustment and then strafe into it, and that's not how you want to do it. So, low sensitivity is good, um, but you don't want to just say, I'm using M speed, blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't tell you everything because you need to know the mouse DPI. A better way to talk about your mouse sensitivity is to say, start at a known location here, move your mouse to the very left side of your mouse pad, turn it, and then with a ruler, measure the distance it took you to turn that. So, distance per 360. If it takes you less than 10 inches to do a 360, you might want to consider lowering your M speed, maybe get a bigger mouse pad to accommodate that. If it takes you more than 20 inches, which wouldn't be out of the ordinary for a Counter-Strike player, you might want to raise it for reflex. You kind of need it to be fast enough to do some important uh, trick jumps, and close range battles can be pretty hectic. You need to be able to do, you know, a 180 flick on demand. You don't need to be able to flick and do like a 720 and rail somebody, that's just kind of silly. Um, so if you're looking for a new mouse, there's a lot to consider. Quality of the sensor determines the max tracking speed. Will the shake fix your hand? What's the USB refresh rate? Higher and that's always better. Unless it has known tracking issues at higher rates, but you might want to look up reviews on that. If you see DPI on a mouse, that's usually a marketing gimmick, honestly. You do not need crazy high DPI. Like mine supports up to 10,000, which is ridiculous. I have the G502. Uh, that is irrelevant to gamers, as far as I'm concerned. 
Uh, you just have to make sure that the mouse tracks well by looking up reviews on it from uh, knowledgeable sources. You can find some good ones online. I don't have any offhand right now. Um, now, I could turn this into another plus 30 minutes on this video by talking about mouse acceleration, so I'll just mention the mouse acceleration that you guys have seen is probably bad. Uh, whenever you talk about mouse excel, you think uh, Microsoft's enhanced pointer precision. You think about Logitech's mouse acceleration that you have like a couple of options, but it doesn't really let you control it. You don't want to use those. On the other hand, uh, Quake Live had some wonderful mouse acceleration options. You could set the starting sensitivity, how quickly it goes up, whether it's a linear increase or a quadratic. You could set the capped sensitivity that it would get to. So this means you could have a sensitivity that's really good for, you know, small adjustments here, and then it gradually goes up, and then you can still do a flick and get a 180 in. I'm actually using a driver based on that. And I have other videos on my channel here talking about it. It is wonderful. Pova Hat's mouse acceleration driver. I highly recommend it. Of course, if you've been use, uh, using the same mouse sensitivity for like five years, then, you know, if it serves you well enough, you don't have to go into this. But if you're new, consider it. Right now, the driver is unsigned, so it's a little bit of a bear to install. But we're talking about uh, getting that signed whenever Windows 10 comes out here very soon. So, you can see if we can do that. Um, now, something else that's important for configuration, monitors. Back in the old days, CRTs were king. They absolutely had the best response times. They could have very high refresh rates, but you had to lower the resolution. There are still some people who use CRTs today, and CRTs are still better than any LCD out there. On the other hand, if you're talking about 60 hertz LCDs, uh, 75 hertz, those things just they feel really not responsive to somebody who's been playing these games for years. Um, if you can swing it, there are 120 hertz and 144 hertz LCDs out there, and they work so much better. They're not quite at CRT level, but they're definitely something that you can um, get and then have an improvement. There's a good community site out there called blurbusters.com great resource. They talk about some good things in there, like I was talking about the interaction between higher frame rate and higher refresh rate. Both higher is good. They'll tell you exactly the same thing. They have some good details on why. And I'll go into that just a little bit more here, because uh, another option, V-Sync. In a lot of games, this is horribly implemented. What V-Sync does is your PC and your video card draw a frame in reflex. So if you could slow down time, see exactly what's going on, it draws one frame, and then your monitor draws that entire frame. So your frame rate gets dropped down to 120 in my case, because that's what my refresh rate is on this monitor. And it draws a frame, shows it on the monitor. That's what V-Sync does. If you turn off V-Sync and you're turning quickly, what you're going to notice is screen tears. So I'm at about 500 frames per second. That means they're going to be, say the, the, the PC and the video card draws the frame, and it gets about a quarter of the way down the screen while it's updating the monitor, and then it says, oh, I have a new frame. So the next quarter of the screen has a different image. Next quarter of the screen, different image. Next quarter of the screen, different image. That's tearing. So there are horizontal lines on my screen whenever I turn like this. They're not that noticeable, because the higher the frame rate you go, the more lines there are, but the more subtle the change. So if I had this at like 240, there would be only one line, rather than three lines in four different sections, and that one line would be a heavier change. But since I have about four, just a little bit more, um, four different divides, it's harder to notice. And the advantage is, I'm getting a more up-to-date picture on my screen and I can barely notice the tears. So, tearing, a lot of people think is bad and it's distracting. You can very easily get used to it. Tearing is not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you go for the really high frame rates. Give it a shot. If you're used to V-Sync because you hated tearing, try turning up your frame rate in this game, see if you can get something like 500 FPS. You probably won't even notice it. And the game will be more responsive. Uh, now for G-Sync, as far as I know, G-Sync is only good whenever you get a frame rate that's lower than your refresh rate. 
So if you're getting like, if you have a 120 hertz monitor and you're getting something from between 60 to 120 FPS, G-Sync is good then. But if you're already getting over 120 FPS, it doesn't serve a purpose and it actually might be a negative. I think FreeSync is the same case, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and also on the topic of monitors, uh, there's input lag. And input lag, people see a number like 8 milliseconds ago. Why does that matter? I'm online and I'm playing on a server where I have 60 milliseconds ping. There's a huge difference between network lag and input lag. Network lag can be compensated for to some extent. Reflex has 80 milliseconds compensation. So if I see somebody and I have 80 millisecond ping, I can click, still hit them. If I have, say, 40 milliseconds of input lag and I move my mouse, I'm not going to feel that for 40 seconds. Try tracking somebody who's dodging whenever you have extra input lag. It is absolutely terrible. You can adjust a little bit for it, but you will suffer. There is absolutely no way to get your aim up to par if you have a lot of input lag. So, the monitors that do 120 hertz and 144 hertz are usually much, much better than your typical LCDs. There are some LCDs that are really good at displaying pictures. They're beautiful. They have consistent lighting across them. IPSs. Um, those have a little bit more input lag than the twisted pneumatic screens, which are usually the 120 hertz and 144 hertz LCDs. So, keep that in mind. Uh, input lag is actually a major factor in determining whether you can aim or not. Input lag and mouse sensitivity, if you have that down exactly where you should, you're going to do a lot better at aiming. So, that's all I have to say for configuration. Uh, the options menu is actually pretty good. There aren't that many hidden things in here. Um, it's, you know, I showed you a couple of things that are missing. Turning off Gibbs can help with frame rate. Other than that, um, you know, you can hop around to the individual widgets and move things around. So, um, Reflex is pretty good for configuration options. And that's it for this episode. Uh, the next episode, I believe I'm going to go into the more subtle game mechanics. And I need to add a couple more here. So, I'll try to get to that this afternoon if I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.